Hello and welcome to Be Still and Know. And today is another edition of Movies and TV That Are Real, Adam's Book of Revelation, Soft Disclosure in the Media. And today's video is Why Men in Black is Real. So the Men in Black series is actually one of the most blatant uh, vehicles for soft disclosure that we have. And so let's go ahead and get started because this is a big one, guys. All right, so let's go ahead and take that deneuralizer so that we can remember why Men in Black is real. All right, so the Men in Black series starts off with Men in Black 1, and that is with Will Smith. And so he plays a New York City police detective who has a strange experience with a suspect that he's pursuing that leads him down a rabbit hole of secret government agencies, high technology, breakaway civilizations, extraterrestrial beings, and secret alien warfare happening unbeknownst to everyday people on planet Earth. Some themes in the movie are extraterrestrial beings, hidden breakaway civilization, extra legal government actions, hidden high technology, paradigm shifts, time travel, scale, deceit, and sacrifice. So here are the elements that are based on reality. There really are men in black who show up after strange or otherworldly events occur. There have been many eyewitness accounts and even a few photos that claim that these beings appeared after or around strange events such as UFO sightings or encounters and strange phenomena. These men often appear in black suits, sometimes driving black Cadillac cars and SUVs. Descriptions of their physical appearance are always creepy, off-putting, and strange as they often appear completely bald with almost white plastic-like skin and slits for mouths that have lips pinned on in red lipstick. Witnesses claim they are hard to look at straight on and appear blurred in photos and videos. They are most likely shape-shifting non-human entities wearing a human costume similar to the bug alien Edgar in MIB-1. They give people bad vibes and are always pushy and aggressive with their demands, whether they be to confiscate a strange material or object, or to try and silence an individual from exposing a strange event they witnessed. Actor Dan Aykroyd, star of another soft disclosure film, Ghostbusters, even saw a MIB while he was shooting a documentary style UFO show with big names in the UFO community like Stephen Greer and Linda Moulton Howe. One day after filming, Aykroyd stepped outside for a cigarette and answered a phone call from Britney Spears who wanted to talk about an upcoming SNL episode. While he was on the phone, he said he turned and looked out onto 42nd Street in New York and noticed a black SUV with a tall man dressed in black giving him a dirty look. Aykroyd turned away, but then did a double take within a matter of a second and the car had vanished. Two hours later, Aykroyd and the cast were told the show had been canceled completely and would never air. To this day, they were never given a reason why. The filmed episodes have never been released to the public. Besides the men in black themselves, there are other elements in the MIB series that are also based on reality, such as the existence of advanced extraterrestrial technology and how it has fallen into the hands of certain secretive groups within the governments of the world, and especially the U.S. military industrial complex. Certain factions of these groups have existed in some form for thousands of years and have managed to infiltrate most major modern day governments. Many trace their lineage back to the original extraterrestrial groups who colonized this newly terraformed planet in prehistoric times and created modern humans through genetic manipulation. Many within these groups are extraterrestrials themselves, just like in the movies where they have agents and tourists to Earth who are non-human. There are also breakaway societies on Earth that have access to these facilities with high technology and weapons. These societies include the descendants of Nazis who made deals with ETs during World War II, and that is why they were able to infiltrate the U.S. government via Operation Paperclip, where they started NASA and have led the direction of our space efforts ever since. With the help of ETs, these secret societies had the technological upper hand, as was proved when the U.S. was dealt a great defeat in Antarctica during Operation High Jump when Admiral Richard Byrd and the U.S. Navy attempted to seize control of a joint ET Nazi base that is located there at the entrance of Inner Earth or Agartha. NASA has become the public face of the U.S. space program where they continue to develop outdated combustion technology based on 1800s Russian-German rocket science, while underground bases have been constructed to house a secret space program that has seen anti-gravity and trans-dimensional travel allow for human colonization throughout the solar system, including the moon, Mars, the moons of other planets, and asteroids. Some examples of advanced technology from the movies that really exist today are shape-shifting or wearing of human skins, memory wiping and recall like the Neuralizer or Deneuralizer from the movies, weapons that use sonic boom or laser technology like the Noisy Cricket or Deatomizer, plasma guns, force fields, planetary shields like the ArcNet shield from the movies, flying vehicles that can traverse different mediums like water and outer space at or faster than the speed of light, anti-gravity or levitation technology, high-speed underground trains that travel to secret underground 
underground facilities around the globe within minutes, and concepts like time travel, light beings, and macro universes and micro universes. Even many of the ET species in the movies are based on actual beings that have visited or are currently located on Earth. They exist within secret government facilities, in cities and bases in the inner Earth world of Agartha, deep in the world's oceans, within mountains, and even blending in as everyday humans in our own communities. Some are hostile, as seen in the movies, and many have their own agendas that do not necessarily have humans as the centerpiece. Here are some possible consequences of hard disclosure. So here's the reason why they have not told us like on the news that there are agencies like the Men in Black that go around and handle extraterrestrial issues. Here's some reasons. Humans around the globe would possibly have extreme anxiety and become angry, mentally unstable, or violent. The idea that taxpayer dollars go towards supporting the actions of rogue agencies that hide the existence of extraterrestrials and high technology from the public of planet Earth may justifiably anger many. This would also shatter many religious beliefs and worldviews, but not all may be opposed to the idea, especially those who already believe in an omniscient God that watches and judges all. Knowing that rogue agencies and extraterrestrials exist and have access to high technology and surveillance may not be all that concerning to people who already accept a god that watches and controls their lives. Many would demand access to the advanced technology and human society would change forever. So now that we know, what can we do about it? All right? So now that we know that ETs are not only real but have been pulling the strings in human society and covering up the existence of strange phenomenon to keep humans in a mental cave and matrix of limiting beliefs and half-truths, we can begin to demand greater accountability and transparency within our societies and governments. These rogue agencies are simply the tools of these ETs and secret societies, and their greatest weapon and advantage has been keeping their existence hidden. Their ability to do this comes from our belief as a human collective that we don't deserve to know the true nature of reality and what is happening on our planet. In the past, they used organized religion to keep people from questioning the nature of existence and claiming that humans are by birth unclean, immoral, and undeserving deserving of knowing the nature of God and creation. They gaslighted our species into thinking that we are victims of our existence instead of the masters of it. The words and phrases they have used throughout the generations to keep up this lie and get us to give up our self-sovereignty, self-determination, and freedoms are national security, to protect the public, preserve democracy, preserve our way of life, bring honor to the nation, bring honor to the emperor, and please the gods. So these words have been used throughout the centuries to keep us from questioning what is really going on at the upper levels of our societies. These groups are only a small percentage of the planet's population and even though they possess high technology and weapons, it is not in their greatest interest to use them on humans or destroy the planet they also call home. Average humans are the majority and they know it and even the smallest person can make a world of difference. All right, guys, so that is why MIB is real. There are a lot of disclosures in MIB, such as technology, such as these agencies, such as aliens, and it's almost like these movies were specifically made to disclose extraterrestrials and men in black in particular. So don't get too scared about it. Don't be nervous about it. They've been here for thousands of years. Even during the bubonic plague, people uh, spotted these men in the field with all black robes and these, these uh, scythe-like um, devices that they were like sweeping through the fields. And then all of a sudden the town would break out in bubonic plague. And that's actually the inspiration for the Grim Reaper, okay? So these men in black have always been here, manipulating our societies, keeping us under control and silencing us from knowing what's really happening. So don't be afraid, just free yourself by knowing that this knowledge is actually real. So thanks again guys for joining me for Be Still and Know and the new series, Movies and TV That Are Real, Adam's Book of Revelation, Soft Disclosure in the Media, and Why Men in Black is Real. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe to the channel, please like the videos to help me with my ragorhythms and get more exposure. And remember, you can always give me some money and help me get to buy more equipment and things like that through PayPal or Cash App. And remember that no matter what comes your way, it's going to be a great day. Thanks again, guys, for joining me. I'll see you later.